everybody, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of the Christy Taylor Show. Can you believe it? Twice in one week, back to back. Yesterday, I had a chance to talk to Abba Arthur. She is a actress and writer. And most recently, she was in Wakanda Forever. And as the God would have it, the gods would have it, or the gods of Wakanda would have it, I'm going to be talking to an actor and stunt performer. Or let me get that right. Stunt performer or as we say back in the day, stuntman, who also was on Wakanda Forever. And let me tell you, Jay Wells Jr. is a SAG award-winning stunt performer and actor. Now, he's recognized with a stunt ensemble for the acclaimed film, Black Panther. It was Jay's martial arts background that afforded him the opportunity. He received a fourth degree black belt in karate in Okinawa. Um, let me make sure I get this right. Okinawa and holds a, a Guinness World Record as a participant in the largest gathering of karate practitioners to perform a kata at one time. Wow. It was his role as Troy Maxson in August Wilson's Fences while attending Florida Community College of Jacksonville that influenced Jay's decision to pursue acting full time. Oh, nothing like the theater. Since then, he has had roles in film and television, including Fatal Attraction, Hashtag Murder, American Nightmare, When a Man Loves a Woman, and the short film 30 with NFL veteran Karen Riley. I want you to help me welcome to the Christy Taylor Show, Mr. J. Wells Jr. and uh, Okinawa. I got it. Okinawa. Ladies and live. So let me tell you, you have a chance to jump in on this conversation. But let me roll it back. Jacksonville, Florida, born and raised? Uh, not born, but raised. And so I'm actually a Boston bean. I was born in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. I was raised in Jacksonville, and in Jacksonville, we don't say the city, we say Duval. It's kind of a local <laughs> thing. So if you hear hear that, you know that person's from Jacksonville. Okay, okay Duval. Duval. Okay, yeah. okay. You got, <laughs> you got, it. got it. I love it. So it sounds like being a Boston Beans, interesting, I've never heard that. I was born in Washington, D.C., so I don't know if they had a nickname for D.C., but other than Chocolate City. Um, yeah. But you raised the South. Were you very young when you moved South? Yeah, I was very young, maybe three or so. So I had an, a Boston accent for that much time, and then it went away. <laughs> <laughs> I would say indeed it would have. But let me tell you this. It is such a beautiful country in Florida. Jacksonville, of course, is always, you know, one of the hot spots that people love to go to, other than Miami. And uh, let me tell you, give me some ideas of what it was like growing up and what sparked your creative journey. It was cool growing up in, in Jacksonville. You know, I grew up near the beach, and so it was interesting. And so there was a little bit of a beef. People on the north side of town thought we were rich. And it was like, no, it's, it's poor over here, too. <laughs> <laughs> we got homeless people and people that enjoy recreational substances a little bit too much. Okay. <laughs> Walking down the streets. <laughs> it's just beachfront poverty. I got it. Beach yeah, front it's just the beachfront hood. That's it. That's the beachfront hood. <laughs> I love that. Now, of course, I know that your name is actually Joseph Wells and you're a junior. Um, what's your relationship as far as family, siblings, you know, and also the journey to your creative path? And so my father, you know, I'm named after him. He's Joseph Wells Sr. And I decided to go by, this is interestingly enough, people that know me prior to, why you go by Jay? Why don't you? I'm like, well, you know, my aunt was close to me and she passed, you know, years ago, God rest her. Mm -hmm. And she kind of nicknamed me Jay and that, that stuck. And so some of my friends called me Jay. So I decided when I moved to Atlanta and to pursue the arts full time professionally, I would go by Jay as a way to kind of remember her and, yeah. and to, you know, honor that relationship we had. That's a beautiful thing. You know, uh, family can be so impactful, particularly like you said, as you are on this path, you know, looking at your website, be sure to check him out on his website. Also, imdb.com. Check out those mm -hmm. credits. Um, so were you high school or, or, or just in college before you started really getting into acting? After high school, I would say. At that time, I was really pursuing basketball heavy and athletics. 
and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then after that, which time I discovered karate as well. I always wanted to, to participate in the arts. And then after that time, that's when I kind of got into it. And then I was doing martial arts and karate and acting okay. at the same time, you know, pursuing mm -hmm. and taking different classes and whatnot, learning as much as I could. Church plays and whatnot, community theater. And then eventually I got to the point where I got good enough to where I got a, a, a theater scholarship at this community college, FCCJ. And that's where I kind of really took off from there and collegiate, then uh, more, more community plays. You know, a lot of people um, don't understand the impact that, as you say, high school and community um, theater has on an actor's journey. And it's so beautiful to hear how that has been a part of your path. Um, so shout out to community theater. Shout out to those writing those church plays. Uh, yeah, yes. indeed, indeed. Now, Jacksonville, I understand there is a strong Florida Atlanta connection. Um, Jacksonville and Miami and a lot of those in the creative path end up in Atlanta. So when did you decide it was time to leave the Jacksonville theater community and make that leap? Had you already started doing commercials or any um, television and film in Florida? Just... At that time, before it really kind of popped off here in Atlanta, Florida was starting to become that spot. And so mm -hmm. John Travolta was starting to do projects down there in Jacksonville and the Tampa area. And then we got commercials and whatnot. And so Jacksonville and Florida had some of those film incentives that Atlanta enjoys today, but they just didn't keep them. And so oh, okay. I was doing stuff like that. And then I was working as a tour manager marketing. So... I could eventually, you know, leave. I was looking at New York and LA, that's the classic spots. But yeah. when it's time for me to make that move, Atlanta was on the scene. Yeah. Like most black people, oh, you know, Tyler Perry. You know, Tyler Perry <laughs> in Atlanta. I'm like, you know what? My thing is like, you know what? Tyler Perry hiring black people. I'm black. <laughs> I'm black. You know? I'm black. He'll I'm hire black. me. Okay, I can, I can go there and get some, get some of this work. And so I was actually in LA, in LA and my job afforded me an opportunity to go to LA. I had been to New York and LA, and I was really deciding what market I was gonna to go to. And then the most I spoke to me, he said, hey, does it really matter where you go as long as you get what you need from that place? Mm -hmm. And that made sense to me. So I don't necessarily need to go to LA. I can go to Atlanta because they have film and it's a, it's a bubbling market at that time. So mm -hmm. that's really what made the decision for me to come to Atlanta versus LA at that time. And I'm really glad, glad I made that decision because it's benefited me. You know, I'm, I'm really loving, you know, this is really great. I'm based in Memphis, Tennessee, and we have a strong Memphis, Atlanta connection. Yes. And like I told uh, a co-star of yours from Wakanda Forever, Abba Arthur, uh, which Abba. real quick, I had a chance to chat with her yesterday, you know, um, that Memphis and Atlanta has a love-hate relationship. We always feel like the flavor Atlanta has really came from those that moved from Memphis to Atlanta. So. <laughs> now, did you know Arbor Arthur? I mean, I know we're kind of jumping. Mm -hmm. Do you know her? I, I did. And so I met Abba probably... I've been in Atlanta for six and a half years now. Mm -hmm. And I met Abba at the Atlanta Black Theater Festival. And we were at a screening together for the film last week. And it was such a full circle moment for me because at that time, I want to say it was 2017. Matter of fact, it was before I worked on the first film. I was in the workshop that she was hosting with another thespian. I think his name was Eric. He's a professor. He teaches acting. And I was there in that room learning from her and from him. And fast forward, what, five, six years later, mm -hmm. I'm sharing the stage with her, and we both worked on this, this sequel, Wakanda Forever. And so I know. I know. it just made me smile like, dang, dang I, I was sitting in your class, and now we're here together sharing the stage. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. I, I see a question, and shout out to everybody who's checking us out. Yes, you can drop a question, a comment. Uh, Gina Hills, a fellow Olympian who also has an amazing TV up, show. Gina? She says, um, do you have a support system? If so, who and how do they encourage you? Oh, great question, Gina. That is a great question. I have a support system as an actor and I have a support system as a stunt performer also. And okay. so 
my, my support system is big because another full circle moment for this film Wakanda Forever. I had broke into the stunt game before my counterparts, right? Because I worked on the first film. But then later, they started coming in, jumping into the stunt game. Mm -hmm. And probably about a year prior, we were all in the gym working out together. Doing it for free, just trying to get better stunt performers, making sure that our health is up and we can do what we need to do on set. And then a year later, we're all on the set of Wakanda Forever working together. Wow, and of course, just, it was you know. just a surreal moment for me. Yeah. yeah, I'm standing there between takes. It's like, dang, like, yo, like a year ago, we were in the gym training, and now, now we're all on set working together. And it was just, it was big for me, it, it meant a lot to me. And we were at the advanced screening for Atlanta, and we took a picture, and it was just like, man, like, we're here. And so, yeah. that's my stunt support system. And then, just from my acting teachers and my coaches and whatnot, the people I've been here been able to connect with in that acting space keeping up with one another putting each other in, in our prod prod prop not products uh productions that we come yeah. come up with yeah and um just supporting each other that way and i took a class from takia crystal command she came to one of the festivals and mm -hmm. she talked about hey mr tony what's good shots out to tony, henson. tony henson Yep, his wife is the curator of the Atlanta Black Theater Festival, which I'm referencing. Oh, wow, congratulations, Antonio yeah. Henson, or Tony. Wow, yeah. I need to connect with you all, definitely. You do, you do. I'll put you yeah. all in contact with one another. Okay, appreciate that. so, Takia that. Crystal you. Kamei, shouts out to the actors, Jim. But uh, Takia Crystal Kamei, she came and she talked mm -hmm. about how important your support system is. When what we do in the arts, it can be kind of competitive because for any one role, you got up to 900 submissions. So that's that's competitive. So so for any co-star, day player, five and under, they've looked at 900 people for that role. So it's very competitive. Wow. Yeah. But you have to have a support system. You got to mm -hmm. have your team that, that wants to see you win and you want to see that person will as well win as well so you all can support each other because you can't be out here a lone wolf because these other people have their support systems. They've got their people they're trying to put in place. And so, hey, I don't want to see you with this role. I want to see my buddy in that role. Mm -hmm. And so, especially old Hollywood, they will work against other people. That's not, if you're not in my clique. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? But you, know, you got to have your own team. Yeah, yeah. yeah the old yeah, saying was like, who you know? Um, but I tell you, really, in the time that we have today, it's who knows you. And not only who knows you, but who, who's feeling you, who's digging you, who likes you. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can know some people and they still not put you on. It, you it doesn't matter. It's who knows you, you and who's willing to put you in position mm -hmm. to win. Mm -hmm. And so you yeah, better have your sense. friends that do that for you. And we, we share, mm -hmm. with me and my stunt team, we let each, know, each other know about opportunities, right? Yo. This show is looking for stunt performers. This show is looking for people as well. So that we, we, we stay in the loop with one another. I love that. I love that. Okay, another question. I love the fact you bring you and so you bringing them out today, Angela TV. How did you vet the people in your support system? This is so good. I'm loving the fact that, you know, of course, you're on a journey, you're new in your career about what, 10 years in. And for those who don't know, that's still kind of new to the game. Uh, so how do you Huh? I was saying longer than that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just look young. Just look young. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so how do you vet the people in your support system? It's interesting. You know, I let God do the work really. Um I'm a friendly person. I'm inviting and stuff. And so I hear people say all the time. Oh, you need to associate with this kind of person, that that kind of person. It's just the vibe that we have when we talk with one another. Mm -hmm. Like if we get along, great. If we don't get along, and that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to network in, in this industry just like other industries. But you can't mm -hmm. you can't cheat the game or Ooh. that person or yourself. Wow. And so if you don't vibe with that person, you just don't vibe with them. But people will try to latch on on the people for the perceived opportunity that that person can can perceive can, 
could conceivably bring. Yeah. I don't do that. So okay. if I if I rock with you, I rock with you. If not, if not, it's cool. God will bring the per people that need to be in my life. And if somebody doesn't rock with me, that's fine. I don't believe in cutting people off. We're in winter time right now. I believe in fall. When mm. it's time for bloom, the people that need to be there will grow and present themselves no different mm. than the leaves and the flowers that bloom. And when it's time for them to fall off, you don't need to prune. Like you can look outside right now. I'm looking outside my window. Those leaves yeah. will fall off naturally. I don't need yes. to do anything. Yes. So I let the most high handle all that. Come on now. Gina, she said you've been dropping gems, speaking facts. And uh I'm keep it funky here. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> Also, a special also, shout out to shout out Taylor, Taylor Danielle. Danielle. She's showing you love. Because, uh, thank you so much. We got Memphis represented in the house. Um, of course, you know, one of the things, too, we're talking to Mr. J. Wells Jr. And I love your slogan. And go check his out his website. One thing is something about um, they want to see J. Act. Uh, you give me, give me, a, give me the, the slogan and what does that mean? It's just a... It's a positive play on words and like reverse psychology. And so my grandmother's no longer here, God rest her. But one of the shows I used to watch with her, everyone, everybody loves Raymond. We used to come on TV. Yes. yes. And so it was just like, how you come up with that kind of name? But he did an interview and he talked about it. It was just kind of reverse psychology. And so just implanting the idea that everybody loves Raymond, like everybody loves Raymond. And so you don't even know Raymond. <laughs> you don't know his mom and them. But I just love Raymond. Why you love Raymond? He and Betty died into your hair. Everybody loves me. Everybody loves Raymond. And it's like, yeah, I love Ray. Yeah, I love Ray. Who doesn't love Ray? So that's why I put that on my page. Everyone wants to see Jay act. <laughs> Everybody wants to see you act. I love it. I love it. Okay. Hey, another question. Okay. So Gina Hill wants to know, what do you want to be known for or is that yet to be determined? Okay. Now, number one, you are a actor and a stuntman or now they call it stunt performer. Um, mm -hmm. Do you martial arts deep in the game? Guinness, uh, Guinness World Book of Records, which I definitely want to get into, um, as well as the fact you have been on Black Panther, billion dollar earning movie and the sequel, Wakanda Forever. Uh, so, but what do you want to do? Yeah. That's an interesting question. I want to be known as, I don't know. I mean, I do both of them, right? And I'm in a time and place where you can really do both. Like at one time, if you, were, if you did stunts, that's all you did. If you act, that's all you did. But now that taboo has kind of gone away and you can, you're in a space where you can kind of do both. And so what do I want to be known as? I don't really want to be pigeonholed because I do have mm -hmm. this theater and this acting background. Yeah. And I do have this martial arts background that's afforded me the opportunity to be a stunt performer in these different projects, these movies and these TV shows. And I enjoy, enjoy both equally. So I want to mm -hmm. do both of them. And so, but I answer it this way. If there's a model that... I would maybe follow behind. It would probably be Wesley Snipes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, because if you look at Wesley and what he's yeah. done in his career, mm -hmm. you know he's known for his martial arts skills and his action mm -hmm. movies. But Wesley, he does comedy well. Yeah, he does drama well. Mm -hmm. He does leading man well. Mm -hmm. He doesn't necessarily excel in any one area, but he does it all very well, and he's competent right. at all of it. He does characterization well. Yeah. And so that's, if there's anybody I'm kind of chasing a model in my career after, it would probably be Wesley Snipes. That's a good, that's a good that's one. Good. You know, a lot of times people think of only the leading men, um, but some of the hardest working men are the most uh, like Samuel Jackson for years, nobody knows how busy he was, but he has mm -hmm. definitely stacked his credits, his acting credits. Yes. And, and I would, I would offer this also because we all know the expression "jack of all trades, but master of none." Mm -hmm. And so that's that's only half of the real statement. And so the full 
expression of that is a jack of all trades, but master of none, none, but is usually better than the master of one. Ooh, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Say that so, again, because I've never heard the whole thing. You said the jack of all trades, master of none. But it's usually better than the master of one. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, I like that. So you do have to, you have to master one area, mm -hmm. but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to stay in that one area. Mm -hmm. And so, and it was jack of all trades because when this, when this term was originally originated, jack is just a colloquial old English term for man. Mm. Man, man of all trades, but master of none, but it's usually a better than master of one. So man is just as interchangeable. So Jack is interchangeable for man. For man, that, understood. Yeah, understood. back in Very the 1800s, understood. that's how they talk. Like today we say man, back then they would say Jack. Jack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's what yeah. that is. And so, but yeah. Yeah. I do believe you do have to have one thing that you do well. Yes. That yes. the rest of your success can branch from. And mm -hmm. so there's a, there's a famous samurai, Musashi Miyamoto. And I book of five rings, you know, martial artists, so I'm reading things, all things martial artists. So he would say, one man can beat 10 men, 10 men can beat 100 men, 100 men can beat 1,000 men, right? And so mm -hmm. on the face of that, it's like, hold on, how can one man beat 10 men? How can mm -hmm. 10 men beat 100 men? The, the, the odds are astronomical against Correct. those Correct. people. But... It's not so much on on the nose about one man beating ten men, but but if you can master one thing, you can master ten things. If you can master ten things, you can master a hundred. You can master, right because his way is the, was the way of winning. So it wasn't so much about one man beating ten men. It's about saying that if you can master one thing, you, you can, can master, master ten things. Master. Because the principles wow. that you employ in this one area. You can extrapolate that over many areas after these different areas in your life as well, or whatever it may be. You know, the, I think of um, there's a book called like a 10x life. You know, there's a, a rule that whatever you do, if you do it times 10, if you magnify that, of course, you know, even though there's a concept of it takes 10 years to really master a thing and, you know, all those different elements, it's about the mastery. It's about the execution. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I, I saw your question, Chauncey. Let me get back to you. Shout out to Chauncey Scott. Uh, what's your favorite project that you've worked on? All right. Okay, Chauncey. That's my brother from another mother. Okay, Chauncey. Uh, what's up? My favorite project I've worked on. It would probably be. It'd probably be the first Black Panther. That's my that's my answer for right now, and just okay. for so many reasons, I was I was down and out before I booked that. Okay. And mm -hmm. it was that that artist journey, you know, starving artist, and I was starving for real. Like he know, like <laughs> I was down to my last. I ain't have money for the rent. <laughs> I was struggling. I'm looking at my TV like, man, what can I sell? Like, right. I might be homeless for a minute. I, I don't know. Right. Right. And then I got the call to audition for Black Panther, and I went and auditioned, and I got it. And I got paid, and I was able to pay my rent the next month, and, and here we are. And then being on that set, I felt like I found my tribe. And so with Black Panther, the first one, that's the first time that, you know, my life as a martial artist and my life as an actor were able to kind of come together and it made sense. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, had I had not had I had I not had those skills as a martial artist, I wouldn't have booked Black Panther because I was in the Jabari tribe. I I wasn't the right size, like, you know, see the news. Dude's yoked up like. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Jay, wait a minute, Jay. I got a pig. I got a pig, bro. Check us out. Okay. Yo, that's the crew. Man, bye. Who? 
Wow. Now, who are these gentlemen with you? You're in the middle, of course, you know, with the, yep. the with the little Bantu knots. Or... <laughs> That's that Florida boy swag. They tried to give me that Kodak Black. Oh! <laughs> wow. And so, on my right, that's my man Rabon. At this time, he was doing some doubling for M'Baku. Oh. And then on my left, that's my other homeboy, Josh. We were both in the Jabari tribe. Wow. And I'm I in the middle. Love it. Love it. Yeah, the little Jabari that up could. Up <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Compared to their sizes, yeah. Yeah. Those are some big dudes. Those are some big dudes. But you say your mm -hmm. martial arts. Now, how long, when did you start even, you know, uh, was it high school, college when you got into karate? Around that time. Mm -hmm. And I saw. Or, you know, participate. Okay, yeah, we had a, this, yeah, we're back, we're back, ladies okay. and gentlemen, honey. We can't fight the, the internet, or they say Al Gore's internet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Felix, I'm Valencia Griffin Wallace. She said, Jay, <laughs> Valencia. So, uh, repeat, repeat the question. Yeah, we, you were trying to give me um, insight into um, the martial arts. You started it in high school, college, um, and mm -hmm. that kind of ran alongside your acting. And you're like yeah. saying the Black Panther was the, the perfect marriage of the two. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, I started taking karate, Okinawa Goju, your karate training. And, mm -hmm. you know, the training was arduous, but it really, right. at that time when I started taking karate, I did it because I had a passion for it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there were two two reasons I started taking karate. One, I had a cousin that I met at a family reunion and he was a martial artist and he used the nochaku. And as a kid, seeing that, it just fascinated me to no end. I was like, and I was shy. I was like, Mom, take, take me over to him. And she took me over there to meet him and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I just never forgot him. I've lost track of him. I never forgot him. And then the other thing, I was bullied as a kid, too. And so, but at the time I wasn't taking any kind of martial arts, learning how to defend myself. I said, as soon as I get a chance, I'm gonna start learning some kind of martial arts. And I wanted to learn Kung Fu, but there was a karate school right in the neighborhood. So I went there and I started taking it. The rest is history. And the training was arduous. We were in there doing push ups, sit ups, squats, knuckle push ups you know, taking blows to the back and to the stomach, you know, body conditioning drills to make sure we were tough and whatnot. But hindsight, it really developed me for what I'm doing now, being a stunt performer, because you're yeah. taking bumps and bruises and getting hit and taking wrecks and these different kind of things. And so yeah. the most I just seen the beginning for the end for me, like, yo, I'm going to develop you for this career that you're going to end up in. Right. right now, Jay, yeah, Jay stuff as a sort of certain performer, stunt. oftentimes, real talk, we don't think about you know black actors or black stunt performers because I think of those Mission Impossible stunts and you know all the Wild Wild West type stuff. Is it difficult as a black person, man or woman, to get into into the stunt industry in Hollywood? And if so, what's the path? We freezing up a little bit, but that's okay. We are gonna work through this. Performer, oftentimes. As soon as the internet allows us to be great. Okay, yeah. So okay. once again, what I was asking was, is it difficult as a black person to get into the stunt aspect of the industry? Because I don't really think about that when you know when we're thinking about Hollywood. We think about I want to act, I want to write, I want to direct. Mm -hmm. What's the path to that? It was. It wasn't difficult. It can be challenging, but I came along at the right time. And so if you think about the makeup, a lot of the movies that we watch, they are 
white leaning. And so you have a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of white people, Indians. Mm -hmm. For those who are watching, I know we are having some technical difficulties, but we're going to keep it 1,000 here. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's see. Hey, Sandra Hill Wilson. Sandra Hill Wilson, thank you, love. Spanish or whatever, and you have a few black people, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're having issues. Jay, could you repeat that? You know, you're saying that oftentimes it is a white man's, you know, aspect or Native Americans, yeah. but black people, um, whether it's, it's male or female. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just um, if you think about the make the the makeup of the movies that we watch, mm -hmm. if there's a, a black man and a black woman and they're doing stunts, there's not a real need for an overabundance of stunt performers. You just need one male that can do the stunts and one female that can do the stunts. That's two stunt performers out of the entirety of the cast. Wow. Right? And so for yeah. me, when I came along, Black Panther was the first such film where you need an abundance mm -hmm. of black male and female stunt performers. And so I was able to come along at that at that right time to really get get into the game. Wow. And so and then it came along again for a new crop of stunt performers for Wakanda Forever. Yeah. And so I can't get those needs and mm -hmm. and get on some of these different projects these film and tv shows but now there now. again in the time and space that we're in it's a great time to be an actor and a performer because outside of network tv you've got yeah. the movies you've got streaming services now you got even apps now with apple tv that have got their yeah. own original programming and content so there's a lot of work out there I love the fact that you're talking about how it's expanding and more importantly, Marvel putting Black Panther into their releasing Black Panther and Wakanda Forever really has employed thousands of African American, African, you know, um, even Native American and now with the Wakanda Forever, a whole nother and allowing them to showcase themselves on the global stage. I, I really salute that. I really do. And then to know that particularly it's employing stunt performers of color. Uh, Lindsay, yeah. Do you think the market will pick up for stunt people of color? Um, other projects, you know, will that begin to become a thing? I, I believe, yeah, Lindsay, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yes. It's already happening. And so, again, Black Panther introduced a whole new genre of film with uh, Afro future, Afro futurism, futurism Afro yes, cyberpunk, yes. that kind of genre where you now you have these futuristic tales that involve black people. And even now with the industry, now you look at some of these things that were classically, you seen a lot of white people now. Mm -hmm. the, introducing more people of color and so wow. even with uh what's the show it's house of the dragon now but it was on hbo the game of thrones game of thrones not yeah. again house of not house of dragon and now you got old english african-american or black performers on there and that old kind of english these old stories that you you wouldn't typically think that black people would be in now you're starting to see black people in these spaces now so it's good and so to answer your question yes it's starting to change around now and then you, yeah. you have other people not I'm, I'm a black stunt performer i enjoy story just like anybody else and i've got my own stories that i'm painting as well i was I wondering about that, that. Mm -hmm. let's so talk about you as becoming the writer yeah 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 that was my favorite that's my favorite uh, class in school, English. And so I'm tapping back into that. I'm kind of a lazy writer, but I'm getting back to that because there's some stories I want to tell, I want to see that revolve around different issues and definitely pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. Now, of course, I know we can hang out all day, but can, they, can you just give them a breakdown of your role 
in um, your experience as an actor and stunt performer in Black Panther and Wakanda, give us what it was like to be on the set, being around Ryan Coogler, and of course, being in Black Panther, you were there when Chad Boswick and all that. So just kind of let us live vicariously through you since we were not on set. It was, it was cool. And with Ryan Coogler, what you see is what you get. He doesn't put on airs. How he talk is how he talks. And so when he, even when he's directing, uh, okay, so see, uh, over here, we're going to have some elephants and, mm, you know, running through here. Y'all going to be running, getting out the way, this and the third. Y'all got it, cool. All right, let's run it. And that's just how he talk, you know. And I, I just love that. He's just he's just real. He's just himself. And, you know, just being on set, seeing Leticia and Lupita just walking around and just being on set with other stunt performers and we just working out and training and getting it in, it was just... It was a dream come true for me, and just feeling like I found my tribe. It was, I felt like Superman returning back to Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Now, now, and of so, course, with you with you being on Black Panther, that means that you were there when Chad Boswick was the star of that project. Did you have a chance to do any scenes with him? You know, when, um, particularly the waterfall scene, were you a part of that or? You know, what were you in, in that particular project? I wasn't big enough for the waterfall scene. <laughs> <laughs> they had the linebackers for that. I was the little Jabari that could. I came out on the battlefield. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly enough, uh, I, I kind of tested to maybe be in the suit because they didn't want to fly Chad back during the first film. I worked on the reshoots. And so... I didn't do that. I was in the Jabari tribe, so I didn't meet Chad with God rest him. And um, yeah, so some of my counterparts, they met him and got a ch chance to kick it with him. I know a guy, Maurice Crump, he's out of Atlanta area. He was Chad Wick's martial arts instructor. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So he actually, per he personally got Chad Wick ready for Black Pan Panther with the uh, fighting with the different, you know, weapons that he mm -hmm. used in the challenge scenes or whatnot. And so look him up, Maurice Crump. As a matter of fact, oh. he'd be good to have on your show talk with him because he's got- Please, please make that connection. connection. Yeah, we'll talk. I'll get you in contact with Maurice. Maurice yeah. would be a wonderful guy. He's got all kind of stories with uh, with Chad. Wow. You know something, I got to put this back up here. Karen Kimbrough, she got some love for you. Black Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Now, of course, I see that you do, even as an actor and a stunt performer, you have a, a strong sense of hum, hum, humor. Uh, do you, are, are any of your projects going to probably be like kick ass? Because, you know, I love those nerdy uh, pseudo superhero yeah. movies. I'm definitely a blur. It's, uh, oh, yes. I've dipped my toe in the comedy. I've done some stand up before. I need to get back into it. Um, I've been focusing more or less on my martial arts training and stunt work, but I do want to grace the stage again. And there's been a lot happening I want to talk about. Ooh, you know. uh, can you give me a little something? Okay, okay, of course, Wakanda Forever is the most recent thing that's in theaters right now and all that good stuff. Um, but can you give us what you're working on? Oh, somebody said Blade. Are they going to bring Blade back? Valencia? Yeah. Do you know something? Working on Blade right now, so you are. I am really just. This is like an amazing interview, and it would be freezing today. But honey, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna work through this. Jay Wells Jr. So, I'm are paid. they working? I know, I'm... I know. I I don't know. First of all, what's up with this Atlanta uh, Memphis connection today? What's really happening? <laughs> So are, so, you, are you on Blade? On Blade? It, most high willing, I will be working on that. But right now, it's delayed. Uh, they had some issues with the script. The The director stepped away, so they're looking for a new director. They're work, reworking this, the script. But right now, Maharshala Ali is pinned to be the new Blade. So he's going to be the lead. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So okay. right I, now, it's been pushed back. It's been pushed okay. back. So we'll see when he okay. get that up and running again. But right now, it's been pushed back. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody's, um, Chauncey, he, he has now determined the reason why we're having internet problems. And I do say internet. <laughs> not, not internet, but internet. Now hold on. You're being too real now. <laughs> 
Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my Melissa, God. you're okay. Come on, work all of us blurs up in the house because when blurs I tell in the you, house. Blurs in the house. Blurs in the house. Mm -hmm. Um now one of the things do you believe there will be okay for those who have not seen it? I'm gonna raise my hand. I've been crazy busy, but this weekend I'm gonna add a couple more dollars to the billions of dollars that will be Wakanda Forever's box office. Uh, right. Do you see a sequel for Mar you know in the Marvel universe? In the Marvel universe, will we continue to see Wakanda grow just as we've had Doctor Strange and Thor and you know all of course Iron Man? Mm hmm. So I believe I can talk about this. This is in the public space. You can look it up. So uh, Ryan Coogler has been pinned to to write a Wakanda series. So <gasps> okay. yeah, that's in the public space. I can talk about. Yeah, that, that is. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, wow. so there is in the works. Uh, mm -hmm. There's plans to pin, pin um, a show that delves into the inner workings of Wakanda as a nation and the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So there's more stories to tell in that sp space. And so hopefully he can dive into, you know, some of the other tribes in Wakanda mm -hmm. and we get those stories told. And, I love it. Yeah, so Black Tell Panther, me this. I, 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 mm -hmm. I'm sorry, did I'm sorry. you, were, were, you a were you a connoisseur of the comic books before the movie was brought together? Because I remember even when I mean, because this has so many iterations of Black Panther, the, the comic books. Even remember when um, the Hutland brothers, I mean, was it Reginald Hutland? Yeah, the Hutland brothers. Yeah, because yeah. I read they some of those. Black Panther, yeah. 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 Yeah, I was reading it then. I was doing my research. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't famous enough at the time. I wasn't <laughs> well known enough. And so, yeah. that was. So, yeah. hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Come on, keep, on, keep, keep working, going. Jay. Come back and see us. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and see it. Come back and see it. And so, yeah, oh, so yeah. even when uh, Wesley was, uh, he was trying to get the movie off the ground, it just didn't work out. And so he took Blade, mm -hmm. and he did a phenomenal job with Blade. He made that character yeah. popular. First of all, I loved like, Blade. I loved all the iterations of Blade. Totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, like, that's why I got to get my mind ready for, you know, the new Blade. But, you know. Yeah. Hey, Sandra. Sandra ask you oh, all the love. Y'all are just showing us love today. Okay, any last, okay, what are the projects? Okay, I know we want to stay in the land of Wakanda, in the nation of Wakanda. You know, and I understand in Atlanta, you actually can get a direct flight from Atlanta to Wakanda. <laughs> you can. I drive, I drive there often. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What studio, okay, before we get off of Wakanda and the whole Black Panther world, um, mm -hmm. What was, was it on the, this year? Was it? I mean, was it shot also on the Tyler Perry studio lots again? Some of it, yeah. They shot all okay. over. Okay, yeah. they shot all over. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Valencia. Now, leaving. I know without us having the desire to, but leaving the world of Wakanda. What other projects are you working on, Mr. J. Wells Jr.? So, um, this is kind of a busy season for me. Um, are we back yet? Yes, we're back. And we're back. And we're back. It's a matter of fact, I was, I, I was working last night on the show. And I was working on a different show, you know, last week. And I worked on a couple of movies since then. You know, doubling, you know, stunt doubling actors and whatnot. And so that's what I've been working on, stunt side. And working on some different indie projects. So I'm kind of getting my name around there for fight choreography. So people are like, I know, hey, can you choreograph a fight scene with the group for me? I'm like, that's yeah, some I good money. It. That's good. Yeah. And so I, okay. I just do what I enjoy. I enjoy creating fight scenes and whatnot and making that come to life and whatnot. And so I'm getting some opportunities in that space. And so mm -hmm. one of the movies I worked on as a fight choreographer was uh, Super Turn. There's oh, a filmmaker okay. here in Atlanta. His name is Marin Robinson. If you don't know him, check him out. He's got a lot of projects on deck that's coming out. 
and the brother's doing his thing, so check him out, support him. But he hired me to be the fight choreographer for his movie Super Turn. So I got a chance to work with Jamal Willard, Tori Hart, E. Raj Mitchell for my people in the ATL that know who that is. Hair Lynx was in that movie. And so I was just doing that. And then also, I was trained by Les Brown as a motivational speaker. So that's the thing I'm really focusing on now, just getting out there, being able to go out and talk to people and inspire them and motivate them motivate mm. people based off my life and my experiences yeah yeah i love that you know and and, and i know we're about to wrap things up but i gotta show you real quick i know i know <laughs> valencia said that you would make a wonderful black panther i mean sandra asked you said that and then valencia she agreed or said you could do blade so uh you got a whole you know you're starting off with your fan club between Yo, hit Marvel up and, and let them know <laughs> and valencia Starting J. Wells Jr. Marvel Fan Club. Like, for they real though. Stuff. Yo, okay, that, that's how it happens. That's how it happens. <laughs> wow. Anything else you want to share? Okay, yes, we could chill off. You know, wait a minute. Okay, it's Friday, 2.30 my time, 3.30 ATL time. Uh, what are your plans for the weekend, sir? I'm just all in your business at this point. Talk to Christy Taylor. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah. okay. In, a, in addition, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Okay, uh, before we go, uh, what do you speak about? Oh, okay, we're going back to the last round question. I like that. Angela Ray so, TV. I'm glad I asked. Yeah. And so, I speak about uh, different things, and so one of my talking points, uh, and you can look, I was one of the speakers on Les Brown's Power Voice Summit, his uh, third annual Power Voice Summit. I was one of the keynote speakers on there, along with some of the other people that came through the rank, ranks and, you know, they found our speech to be, mm -hmm. all right, you can represent the brand. And mm -hmm. so I was like the fourth or fifth speaker on the Power Voice Summit. And so at that time, it was your passion way, makes way for your purpose. Mm. And so I talked about my experience with Black Panther and going back to Musashi, I had a passion in one area that opened the door for me in many areas, right? And so my passion was karate. And that was instrumental in me booking Black Panther and opened many doors for me. And because of that one thing, it opened the doors for me to be a fight choreographer, to be a leading man in different movies, mm -hmm. to do stunts, to teach women self-defense. And so mm -hmm. my passion made way for my purpose. And so I mm -hmm. let people know, figure out what you're passionate about. That's going to open doors for you that you're trying to get into. And so a lot of times we have try to get into the back door, slide into the window. No, do what you do. It might not make sense now, but it's gonna make sense down the line. So when I started doing karate, I didn't know where I was gonna end up with that. Was I gonna be a martial arts instructor? Mm -hmm. Was I gonna be a fighter, a professional mm -hmm. fighter? I, I didn't know, was it just gonna be just a, a hobby of mine that I do? I didn't know, but I just did it because I enjoyed it. And this opened so many other doors for me. And going back to Musashi, mm -hmm. that's that one man beating 10 men. Mm -hmm. That one thing I did well opened so many doors for me. Wow. That's powerful. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. You know, find your passion. You know, and you, whether you just become, you know, a good instructor or end up in the Marvel Universe, I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. No. Can you do that pow pow yes. pow again? You you the pow pow pow. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do that in self defense. As a woman in self defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know something. Yeah. This this internet is not allowing us to be great at the very end. I know, what I was right? to, <laughs> but I was trying We're to get, be great anyway. Pow, pow, pow. Wait a minute. Well, that's right. We're gonna be great anyway. What's the pow 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 that you did earlier? Pow pow pow. pow. You know, you know the old school Batman. Pow, zoom, zap. I'm just providing my own sound effects for my hits. Pow, pow, pow. pow. I love it. What? Oh, okay. Before we go, the ladies in the room say, "Give us one self-defense tip." Oh, let me. Okay, thank you, Valencia. That's it right there. Okay, one self-defense tip. One self-defense tip, and this is the most important one. You got to pay attention and be aware of your surroundings. 
you can cut out so many confrontations just by being aware of what's going on around you. Oftentimes, I'm guilty of this to myself, we walk around distracted. This is the number one thing that's going to distract you and probably get you in the world of hurt because we're right here on our phones or we're on the phone. We're not listening to what's going around on around us. We're looking so we can't see what's happening around us. So just pay attention, be aware of surround surroundings. That's going to cut out a lot of the foolishness because you, you can see it before it happens. And you see people walking up because nine times out of ten, if somebody's going to try to do something to you, they're not going to approach somebody that's up, looking around, ready, and aware. They're going to look at that person as distracted, that they can run, snatch your bag, snatch your purse real quick, snatch your phone, accost you because you're not going to be ready because you're not paying attention, because you're not looking. So mm -hmm. eyes up, be aware, pay attention. That's the number one thing that you can do to protect yourself. Thank you. And that comes from Coach J. Wells Jr. <laughs> Our coach, thank you. Be aware, ladies. Look up, hang up that phone, say, I'll hit you back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, get to where you're going. Building. Rupert Scott coming in. All right. Mr. Scott, what's good? All right. He said, hey, Jay, this is Mrs. Scott. I know that we love you. your brother. Be blessed. Do reply. I know God is on your side. I think I'm, am I reading that right? Mm -hmm. They got love for you. They send you blessings. God is on your side. I got that much. I got that much. All right. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to actor, stunt performer, part of the Marvel Universe. We can see him in Black Panther. Mm -hmm. And now Wakanda forever. Check out the Check out it's in theaters right now. He has other yes. amazing things going on. Check out his website, www.jwellsjr.com. That's jwellsjr.com. Get all up in his business. And uh, yes. ladies and gentlemen, we're looking forward to even his, his own movies. Oh, yeah. He said he's writing, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we're going to be looking out for that. Anything else before we go? Before I say bye-bye. That's it. You know, I appreciate your time and you. I enjoyed myself on this interview. And for the people that tuned in, if you want to reach out to me, you can go to my website right there. That's got all my socials and links and stuff. So if you're interested in learning women's self-defense or just self-defense in general, you can reach out to me there. If you need a speaker, you can reach out to me there on my website and everything. And I'll come and chop it up with you and whatnot. So reach out to me there for speaking and self-defense, or if you just want to train and learn some martial arts, you can reach out to me there. And I have my people right. be in contact right. with your people. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. This has been fun. Yeah, in spite of Al Gore's it. internet. In spite of Al Gore's <laughs> internet. In spite of the fact that Chauncey said Marvel was snipping the internet, regardless of that. Thank you. You've been a delight. Until next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah.